there's a well known quote which says life is what happens to us while we are busy making other plans it's this unpredictability hence unpreparedness is what makes life so fragile yet so beautiful friends some 20 25 years ago i lived a life that many would only dream of i always wanted to be an acclaimed artist and be at top of my game i came from nepal and actually managed to be a popular and successful actress in indian film industry about 80 odd films in five different languages multiple awards to be honest some quality and a lot of quantity <laughs> everything that i had dreamt of in fact more than what i had dreamt of was happening to me what i didn't know that while i was in this most heady most enjoyable ride ever life had planned something else for me that i would be thrown into a whirlwind of things where slowly i'll start to lose it all initially it started subtly like i signed a bad film which flopped and i got a bad review and then there was another and another and another but i didn't care because even then i had some good directors wanting me in their film so i thought well i can always bounce back but that didn't really happen i had developed an unhealthy lifestyle which was attracting wrong company restlessly i was moving from one bad relationship to another one i was in a mess and i was in denial i felt flat on my face when my marriage broke and soon after i was diagnosed with aggressive form of cancer even my cancer was of an extreme kind let me give you a tip of the iceberg of how gruesome my treatment was my chemotherapy was that it was not of balding of the hair losing eyelashes and eyebrows and looking sick and sad that's how we cancer patient look from that glamorous diva to this it was not the looks it was actually when i had to sign waivers for a permanent heart damage a permanent ear damage a permanent neuropathy problem that my hand would be shaking for the rest of my life it's then i got scared really scared i started to worry that maybe these were my last days maybe i was facing the d word the unimaginable unbelievable unfathomable death and then i started to think if this was the end of my life what did i do with my life so far did i live well was i proud of it of course not i had messed it i was living carelessly ignoring my health my career people who cared for me and loved me friends it's been four and a half years i'm cancer free now god has been kind life has been kind not a single day that goes by that i forget 
the promise I made to myself when I thought I was dying. I have prioritized all the three things. I call them gift. My health. I realized the importance of health when I was down with cancer. So I nurture it now. I look after it. I read. I, I inquire and do whatever it takes for me to have a good health. My relationship with my family is much more filled with respect and trust because they were the only people who were with me through from the beginning till the end. My friendship. I used to have on the Raj of friends, huge circle of friends. But today I have handful with whom I share a deeper bond, more meaningful friendship. My work. I realized I'm an artist in my heart, in my spirit, so I need to be challenged for me to grow as an artist, to be satisfied. So I pick and choose films carefully, not carelessly the way I was doing before. I also got fourth gift, and that is realization of value of service of contribution. I would like to share a story. When not too many people were visiting me in hospital, there was this lady who would come and be with me on, her, on Sundays. She's a doctor, a pathologist in Cornell Hospital in New York. Her name is Dr. Navneet Narula. And she would come sit in that uncomfortable chair of hospital, you know, and spend the entire day with me. I was very intrigued because she was very busy. So I asked her, why are you doing this? You're not my friend from the past, and you're not my fan for sure. You know what she replied? She said, Manisha ji, with the hope that you will do this to somebody else. How simple yet so profound, isn't it? That's when I made a promise that if I get a second chance to life, I will pay attention and be of service in whatever capacity I can. It can be anything big or small, it really doesn't matter. So, <clears throat> when earthquake hit Nepal, I had gone to, I had gone there and uh, with the help of UNFPA, we did a campaign for, called Dignity First. And um, I'm hoping to go to remote areas and talk about the importance to educate our girls, our daughters, and talk against child marriages, as uh, there are many multiple complications of that. So that I do, or you know anything as um, a cancer survivor. I go around giving hopes to people, telling that cancer is not a death sentence, that there is a life beyond cancer. Or it could be anybody, and it could be a friend who's reached out to me and needs my patient hearing anything. So I, I do that now. A large part of my story, this gambit of experiences, the highs and the lows, this name, fame, glamour, and the depth of despair of cancer, traumatic chemotherapy, facing death, is not actually about the incidences. It is about finding sense behind it, finding meaning of it all. I had to make sense of things that had happened to me and the things that was happening to me. 
I found few such basic, simple principles. And because they are simple, we tend to take it for granted and don't apply them. I found, number one, that this life is a gift. I know it's a cliche, but it, it is a gift. And everything that comes with this life is a gift. This body is a gift. We need to nurture it, look after it, be grateful. We need to embrace that. People who cross our path, they are a gift. Number two, the importance of introspection. We need to dive into depth of our being, of ourself, to discover our truth and live our truth. As our time is limited, so we must make the most of it. We cannot be living somebody else's life, right? We cannot be living somebody else's idea of life, what is good and what is bad. We need to find for ourselves. We need to introspect. We need to discover what it is that motivates us, compels to live a great life. So every day we can live with clarity and passion. Number three. No matter, no matter, no matter, no matter how we want to be prepared, there will always be a surprise. Life will throw some challenge from somewhere that we are not really fully prepared. But we have a choice. We can either be consumed by it, become victim and make that larger than us and get defined by that problem or we can turn it around into a platform for our growth because there is a message there is a lesson underneath every problem that we face we can make a worse situation of our life into a narrative of triumph the wisdom and the courage is all within us.